Welcome to the Museum Roadshow. I'm Roger Engstrom, and this time we're going to reminisce about hauling cattle to West Fargo and South St. Paul and how livestock were marketed in Becker County over the last hundred years. We also have Don LaFay here and his son Randy, and they're going to share some stories with us about their experiences of hauling cattle. When the county was first settled in the late 1800s, early 1900s, if any cattle were moved from Detroit Lakes and Becker County, they were moved by rail. There was a stockyard where cattle were gathered over by Dollar, where Dow Acoustics is now, and the farmers would bring them in there. They'd probably lead them or drive them, or they'd maybe throw a rope around the cow's neck and tie it to a wagon, and then they'd have the horse pull the wagon to town with the cow tagging along behind. The cows would be loaded on the rail cars to St. Paul. That stockyard was started in 1887, and it just had its last sale this past April 11, 2008. And uh, back in the 30s, uh, it was costing more, too much money to get the cattle to St. Paul on the rail. And that's when the St. Paul stockyards got the idea we should build a branch office at West Fargo because a lot of cattle are coming out of the Dakotas are coming down to St. Paul. So in 1935, the West Fargo stockyards was established. Well, back in the 30s, when the farmers were sending livestock to South St. Paul, they didn't get a check back, some of them. They'd get a freight bill. And I remember visiting with Jerome Legard just a few days ago, and he told about his dad. He said, I can still see my dad standing in the window of the house, opening his check that he'd gotten from West Fargo. He'd sent six hogs up to West Fargo, and he got a check for $3. So times were tough, and these guys hung in there and kept going. When the West Fargo market was established in 1935, roads and trucks were starting to be improved on. And some of the early truckers out of the Becker County were Daggett's. They hauled a lot of cattle to St. Paul. Vern Daggett started out with, one of the Daggett's started out with just a small truck. And uh, over the time, they built quite a fleet. They hauled a lot of cattle in later years from the stockyards to the packing plants or back to the feedlots. Another one was Paulson that was in charge of the loading facilities here in Detroit Lakes where they loaded them on the rail. Vern Mum was an early trucker, so was Art Kohler. And the story was told about Art Kohler hauling cattle from Audubon to uh, South St. Paul back in the early 30s. It took him 12 hours sometimes to get to uh, St. Paul with a load of cattle and he'd have two or three flat tires on the way. As roads improved, of course, things went a lot better. Railroads pretty much were out of the cattle hauling business by uh, the early 1940s and 50s. That was starting to move more of the cattle by truck. And uh, Don LaFay was the one I remember as hauling cattle from our farm. Uh, he'd come with his truck and uh, he'd probably stop at four or five different farms to pick up a load of cattle to take to West Fargo. Well, you'd dump all these cattle in the truck, you had to have a way of keeping track of them. So Don would have a big scissors and it kind of had a curved blade on it and he'd find a place on the animal, usually on the back where they had some fairly long hair, and he'd clip a V or a T or an X or whatever the case may be to identify the cattle from different farms. He'd probably have Engstrom's cattle and Slaughterhoff and some Danielson cattle all in the same load. And uh, when he got up to Fargo, then they unloaded them into, pen, into one pen and the commission firms would uh, decide uh, which pens they were going to go in. West Fargo Stockyards had its big year in 1966. They uh, moved 480,000 head of cattle through the yard that year, 86,000 sheep, and 202,000 hogs. And the thing that's amazing about all these numbers is that this was all kept track of on paper and pencil. Those cattle were coming and going from 24 states. They would probably come into the yards one day and the next day they'd be going out to somewhere else, either to a packing plant or to some uh, farmer feedlot someplace. One of the highlights of selling cattle was trying to guess the weight that they would weigh when they got up to the stockyards and be unloaded. And of course the market report, that was a big thing on KDLM, 6.25 a.m. in the morning and at noon they would be talking to Norbert Miller or Dick Sampson up there, live market report. And I remember as a little kid sitting at the kitchen table having dinner and the market report would come on. And we knew that if Dad was going to listen to the market report, we'd better shut up because he wanted to hear what was being said. And when Norbert Miller was talking, he talked fast because he had a lot of stuff to tell us. And uh, 
One of my favorite memories of hauling cattle with Don LaFay was uh, in October 1979. We had 14 steers we'd been feeding through the summer. We were going to sell them. We told Don about it. He came at 4.30 in the afternoon. And then we decided that we had a couple of cows we'd like to get on the load too if there was room. Well, Don said, get them down there by the pen, and if there's room, we'll put them on. So as we were loading these steers, they were going up the chute single file, just as pretty as perfect as could be. And uh, at about steer number 12, Don looked in the truck. Yeah, he said, there's going to be room for those two cows, so we'll get them in there, and they'll just tag along behind the steers, and which they did. And that last cow just barely got in the truck, and Don hurried up and got that back door down and shut the truck up, and we're ready to go. And uh, as Don started out with this load, he got up on Highway 10 and he realized that, boy, I sure hope I don't see any highway patrolmen because if they make me weigh someplace, I know I'm way overloaded for the license that I've got on my single axle truck. Well, Don got the cattle up to Fargo that Tuesday evening. They were sold sometime on Wednesday. The check came on Thursday by our mail carrier, Robert Pearson, for Route 2. And when we opened that check, we, my brother and I, Don and I, we were just totally dumbfounded when we looked at it. it uh, the load weighed 16,500 pounds. And those steers that that day on the market, I think, had been quoted like at 56 or 57 cents. And we got 59 and a half cents a pound for the steers, 46 cents for the two cows. And we were standing there looking at a check. It was for $9,271. Man. I think that's the biggest check we ever took off our farm at one time. Well, then next day, Friday, it's time to go to town now. We've got to talk to George Maruska because we've got to get our payments on our loan straightened out and pay the interest and so on. We walked into the Detroit State Bank. That's where Bremer Bank is now. They were building onto the bank at the time. We laid the check on George's desk, and he just couldn't believe the size of that check. So he had to walk around the bank and show it to all the other guys that were in there. Well, then it was time to settle up the account with George. I know we left George a check for $3,700. That paid the interest on the loan. We renewed the loan at the same time. Then we went over to the Mobile Oil Station where Bucky Johnson had his bulk station, and uh, we gave him a check for $2,000. Then we stopped at Adkins Equipment on the way home there on Richwood Road right across from KDLM and left a $1,500 check there for payment on account. Well, by that time, there wasn't a whole lot of the check left. But the memory of that is, lives on forever, and I was really tickled the other day when I went down and looked at his old receipt box, and here was his receipt. It was just like living that whole event uh, all over again. This conclu concludes this segment of the Museum Roadshow. Keep listening, because we're going to be hearing from Don and Randy LaFay of their stories of hauling cattle. And remember, on TV3 and the Museum Roadshow, history repeats itself every four hours. Mm -hmm.